and welcome to Forever and Always. I'm your host, Michelle Lima, and thank you so much for joining us. So we often wonder whether or not relationships can be restored or there's even a way out of a relationship that's currently um, unpleasant. And today I'm joined by two beautiful guests who are going to take us through that journey, but also what they've been doing to assist other couples out there. Louis and Elizma, thank you so much for joining me. Hello, Michelle. Welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. Nice. Cool. So take me through your journey. I did a bit of reading about you guys but I'd also like my viewers to get to know a little bit more of you guys. So I'm Louis and this is Yalisma. Um, we've been married now for 12, 12 and a bit. That's a long time. Yeah, that's a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been dating for 17 years. Yeah. 17, 18 years. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's my university sweetheart. Aww. <laughs> that's nice. So forever and always. Hey? Forever. Oh, that's yeah, awesome. That's really <laughs> awesome. Take me through your, your marriage. I read I read something on your website that spoke about what definitely inspired you to start Couples Help. And I really want to talk about that later um, during the second segment. But take me through your marriage. Um, what inspired you to get to actually start that and what actually happened? So I think we were the typical couple. We dated for about seven years, got married. And in the relationship world, we say you move from the romantic stage to the committed stage. And as all couples, we got stuck there. Um, not knowing, I think we are ignorant. We don't have the knowledge. Um, there's no license you can get for, for being married. So all couples get stuck at a time. And our stuckness came six months to two years after getting married. Um, very confused because it's the love of my life my sweetheart yeah. and then things got sticky and we got yes. stuck uh, I like you mentioned that because I think we have this illusion that just because somebody's the love of your life things will never get sticky we will always you know yeah. click which is interesting definitely I think that's such a big eye-opener I think you never expect that it will be different why do you have a reason to think that things will change or it might get difficult when yeah. it's going so well yeah. but i think life i think life catches up with you um, mm. i think there's a lot of things that happens outside of your marriage um, in your own different worlds mm. and that definitely um, contributes to um, what happens in your marriage so for sure yes overnight you just wake up with a lot of new stuff that you were never aware of. Because so. people evolve, hey? That and the committed stage of marriage yeah. does a lot of things. Take me through that. What does that look like? The committed stage, because so the reason I'm asking this, like I said in the beginning, we always think that because there's so much intimacy, it's always going to be like that. And when we get to the committed stage, like I believe you guys went through, it becomes very difficult because sometimes the intimacy is not on full 100% like it was. You know, what I believe is intimacy um, only comes later. What we experience at the beginning is attachment. Oh, wow. Yes, the okay. romantic state is very different than intimacy. Oh. So for the last seven years, what we've discovered is that marriage has is, got something to do with love and comfort. Something to do. Yes, but, the, but, but the, the unconscious journey of love is growing to wholeness. Oh, wow. So in the committed state, what happens is two people they got attracted to each other, mm. is starting pushing each other okay. into wholeness and discovering things about yourself mm. that you never knew, mm. that wasn't on the table. You just wake up one morning with all this new material <laughs> and you discover words like, I'm an isolator and you're a clinger. Oh, wow. And you sit with that dynamic. You sit with people that when pain shows up, she wants to talk about it now. Very anxious. <laughs> And from my particular story in my youth and where I grew up, I become silent when I want to walk away. Oh, wow. And you sit with all those things. And then sex comes on the table, you know? Yes. We always make sex, we always have sex in this space. Yeah. So if all those things compound, sure. even that dance becomes difficult. And two people that was in connection wake up one morning um, disillusioned with what is happening between them. Wow. wow. So, how did you come out of that phase? <laughs> did we come out of that phase? <laughs> um, 
video. I think, um, yeah, I think there's always, that's what I'm trying to say. I think it's it's a continuous process. Yes. Mm. So it's definitely not static. And um, there will yes. always be new insults and things that changes that will challenge us yes. and, and um, bring about new things that we discover um, from each other. Um, yeah, I just think, if I have to say, I think, um, we weren't happy with where we were. This is not that this wasn't a part of our dream, and we wanted to change it. We wanted to change it, mm. um, and I think that's I, I consider myself lucky that that is where we envisioned ourselves to be. We did not want to go separate routes. We really wanted the forever after. Um, so and then we journeyed. So I think we had a lot of awakenings along the road. Yeah. One was doing a marriage course somewhere, mm. then discovering the psychology of um, being married, mm. doing that every year, investing in something new, mm. um, personality types. Um, we just did a lot of things that contributed to our awakening into the space even more. Yeah. To understand ourselves, um, mm -hmm. I think that is the biggest journey. Sure. And um, because you cannot be in a relationship with someone if you do not understand where you come from mm -hmm. and what drives you, um, mm -hmm. what drives your beliefs, mm -hmm. what drives your fears. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was one of the biggest journeys mm -hmm. um, to be a better together. And that we project a lot of stuff onto our partners, mm -hmm. what she's saying. So I think our first awakening was that. A lot of things I'm unhappy with mm -hmm. and the stories I make up got nothing to do with her. Wow. It's my evolving self that I'll stuck. Sure. So a lot of you know, those awakenings helped us along the way. And then kids come, hey? And, 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 and that's a new awakening and that pushes you into new yeah. discoveries about yourself. So I think the biggest thing is a couple that's committed to growth, constant growth. I think that, and both of us had that intention. And that helps us yeah. keep on growing. Do you think that couples who have been together ever since they were a lot younger, like yourselves, have it slightly a bit harder because he's all you've ever known, she's all you've ever known, you know, and you grow up and as you evolve as a person, what's that like? What do you think? Sure, I don't know. <laughs> In a sense, yes and no. I don't know, Lily, what do you think? Um, well, I think it's a challenge. Um, so we fall in love in a relationship. Yes. And the two people grow. But if you're not conscious about it, then the relationship never adapts to the people that contains it. So we have a relationship that's 18 years old, but we never invest in it, but, but I'm actually 39 now. But it's still... So the, the art is to... As the people to develop, mm. every year reinvent the relationship mm. so it, it's on track with the two people contained, contained in that. So it, it's a skill, I think it's... Um, and, 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 to, uh, and to stay interested mm. and never to make up my, uh, my story that I know this woman. Yes, even though you knew her ever since she was... Yes, and because she's evolving. Yes. I may know her past, yes. but every... Every day I see her after work, she's a different person. And to have that consciousness, to say it's a mystery evolving and not to get tired to that. Mm. I think the art of connection is to stay interested and awakened mm. to the person on the other side. But I think it's a challenge. Mm. Hmm. Because I think now in, in this day and age, there's always talks about um, people are being encouraged to figure themselves out before they get married, so that they don't have to get in the marriage. So sometimes they talk about people not getting married when they're too young, because they feel like you haven't figured yourself out yet. And you guys are a couple that were married, really, you were together for a very long time when you were younger. You know, um, so it's just interesting to know that irregardless, you're still evolving. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Whether you're alone or together. Mm. But I think if you have a nice relationship to evolve in, it's easier. Mm. Uh, I can speak for myself. Yeah. To, to have this safe space mm. to find myself was lovely. Oh, wow. That she was patient enough to sit with me through my 20s <laughs> and early 30s to um, just figure yourself out. Yeah, that's good. What was your, your, your biggest challenge within growing together in marriage? I, I 
thing Louis touched a bit on it earlier on is our very different personalities and how that rolls out to absolutely every aspect of our life. So obviously, I think when we were younger, um, I was a person who um, you would call maybe a cleaner. Mm -hmm. So I wanted really to suck everything out of him. I wanted to know um, what I had for lunch, Breakfast, who lunch. Did he, what, what did, who did he chat to you today? What did they chat about? Did he talk to his mother? What did she say? So I was like, for me, it was normal. And um, he's more an isolator. Um, yeah, I, I, I need space to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> and be his own self. And then from that, that affects how you fight, how you are friends, how you are lovers. Um, and that was, I think, the biggest challenge to grow from that into more complete human beings. Yeah. So if our marriage was a dance, so the picture comes up for me, is the, the first step in our dance was for her to step back and give me space and for her personality to do that was really difficult and for me to step in. And that was that was that kept us busy for a few years yeah, to get that rhythm of intimacy <laughs> yeah. right. Very busy. Yeah. yeah. What, what was that like trying to come out of that? It's difficult. It's very hard because it's it's who you are. It's who you've been known to be. It's it's comfortable. Um, but there's also a sense of freedom um, that comes with that development or that um, evolving process. Yes. Um, yeah. It's it's. Um, you, yeah, you set free from a lot of things and knowledges and beliefs that you had um, and it's, it's great to then explore a complete new way. world yes. you know, or way of living and thinking yeah. and you will often joke and say oh, where's, where's my where's all the questions <laughs> and I, I want you to be clean and needy again and oh, yes I miss it now um, yeah, and um, you will sometimes like be clingy and needy. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like we learn a little bit about yes. each other's personalities mm. and, and how that can um, also... Yeah. It is freedom. Remember that the clinger is formed in a personality where there's a deep insecurity of self from the story where she grew up. I really was about to get into that, the, 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 the claim, because I know a few people that really suffer from that. Does it stem from just a personality trait or a particular insecurity that needs to be dealt with? I think it's personality, mm. but it's maybe Louis will be able Yeah, to. personality is formed by the world we grew up in. So all the ingredients of the world around them forms that intimacy pattern or that attachment pattern. Um, it's, it's based in the insecurity about self. And for me to exist, I need to exist through you and breathe through you. So it's very difficult to exist yeah. on their own. Yeah. So when they attach in love, they want, to, they want to really attach and live from the Not a very strong sense of self. So the freedom in that world is to discover inner strength, um, the inner voice that you never had, yeah. and just step into that, that new world. Yeah. And for us, the avoiders, to step back into intimacy. So our story is somewhere along the line, um, intimacy has hurt being close to people. So we step away. So for us to rediscover the safety of being close and dependable, mm. that's also freedom. Sure. Oh. That is interesting. Yeah, so that in itself really brought about, I think, every little um, struggle that we had in our relationship. Mm. Um, yes. Yeah, and I also think one of the biggest things um, that Louis also mentioned on is, is um, personal issues and irritations and struggles that we had with each other. Mm. and. Um, how we started to realize through reading, through exploring relationships and how that dynamic work is, mm. that it's, it's mostly your own issues. You have to grow up and you have yeah. to take ownership of, you have to be responsible for yourself, mm. what you do, what you do to other people, um, and if you can just own up a little bit, um, it really contributes to, to your marriage and your relationship. Yeah. So the one thing we discovered that was amazing is that the conflict in that space was actually two people inviting each other to growth. 
So when I said to give me space, I wasn't rejecting her, I was calling her into a new way of being. And when she said to me, you need to come closer, not for me to interpret it as smothering or giving up or whatever, it was an invitation to growth. So when we got that, that all conflict is two people inviting each other to grow back to parts they've lost many years ago. We could have embraced conflict and not going to that conflict spiral of avoidance and anxiousness or whatever yeah, comes I'm up for couples. So the whole thing of if there's conflict, what is the conflict inviting us to see and learn about ourselves? And that changed a lot for us. Yeah, I like the fact that through all the challenges, your intentions were just to be together, irregardless. And I think that's a really great foundation for any couple that even through the tough times, you still want to see each other together. Even if it's tough and you still want to work through that. So. And we've, we've learned the tradition to declare our intentions regularly with each other. To say, remember my intention with you is not to feel alone, to be loved, and then to do life around that. So when we get into conflict and she says to me, Louis, you're really rude to me, you're not listening to me, I say to myself, okay, remember my intention is to love you, so let's talk about this. And she with me as well, she would say, I didn't mean this, remember my intention is to love you. December we will sit down, when we have a glass of red wine looking over the sea, we'll say, next year's coming up, what is our dream for our relationship, uh, what needs to happen? Hmm. I like the, the dream of our relationship, please take me through that. I think it's just something um, that keeps us conscious, um, just to say this is not something we have and that we can hold in our hands and it's ours for always, mm. um, it can disappear like that. Mm. Um, so I think a dream helps you to remember um, what it is that you really want. Um, and we just had a conversation casually last week and said um, th there was never a time in our lives where we thought um, that we did not want to fight for each other or did not want to make a plan to make it better or um, to do better. So I think a, a dream is something that mm -hmm. it's not something that we just accept. Um, mm -hmm. We want each other to know that my dream for me and you is to, to be together and to be happy together and to be great together. Um, it takes you to consciousness. We live life unconsciously. Mm. Um, Ninety percent of relationship happens in the unconscious mind. The, how we react, what we say, how we attach. Yeah. So the dream just takes us to intention and consciousness. Mm. To say that we, we need to develop the art to know what to say yes to and what to say no to yes. for this relationship to work. Mm. If she gets a promotion at work, mm. if there's a dream, we need to check the promotion with the dream. If you say Yes, the promotion, what, how does it affect the dream we have for us? If I say yes for working overseas, how does it affect the dream? It just keeps you conscious about the space and what you bring into it. Because we determine it. It's not a static thing. What we bring into it and put into it is going to grow you. And the dream just keeps that conscious. I, I think it's really important you mention that and the reason why I asked is because I think every new year we all set our dreams for our careers and our goals and we all have these vision boards but we really don't sit down and have dreams about where we want our marriages and our relationships to go. So I think that's really a, an important thing to get to. And the dream determines what you practically then do. If this is a dream for 2019, what do we need to do practically to get to that? Okay, so we need date nights. We need to sit down once a week, 12 minutes. Yes. We need to schedule playtime. We need to have more sex. We need to invest in a marriage course. We need to read another book. So just take you to that practical step. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's something I definitely want to um, chat further about on the second segment of the show. So thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back for the second segment. Please don't forget to engage with us on all of our social media platforms and we still have our lovely guests. We'll see you in a bit.